Good day, Grade 10s. In this last lesson in the Reactions and Aqua Solutions section, we're learning about iron exchange reactions. What is an iron exchange reaction? It's a reaction where the positive ions exchange the respective negative ions due to a driving force. And there are four types of iron exchange reactions. There's precipitation, gas forming, acid base, and redox reactions. Now, we've seen most of these reactions before. We just haven't labeled them as such. Let's start off with the precipitation reaction. So we're going to take sodium chloride and we're going to add... Silver nitrate, nitrate is added to a sodium chloride solution, forming a precipitate of silver chloride. So you saw that sodium chloride, when it's added to silver nitrate or vice versa, it forms a white precipitate. So the equation for that is Na plus Cl minus plus silver nitrate. And watch here, there's the sodium plus. It is joining up with a negative nitrate, oh sorry, yes, negative nitrate to form sodium nitrate. And yeah, your silver plus is joining up with your chloride minus to form your silver chloride solid or precipitate. This arrow here means precipitate. So there you can see a clear indication of the ion exchange reaction that's occurring. Now let's talk about gas forming reactions. We've actually seen a similar reaction like this before. In fact, we've seen exactly the same one. Just a different video now. We're going to take sodium carbonate and we're going to add hydrochloric acid. From what you learned in the last lesson where we tested for carbonate, what do you expect to form? We're investigating the reaction between sodium carbonate and hydrochloric acid. Lime water is used to test whether the gas given off is carbon dioxide from the reaction. Lime water turns cloudy in the presence of carbon dioxide. Hydrochloric acid is the common name for hydrogen chloride. The acid is added to the conical flask first of all. The flexible delivery tube is used to make sure that any gas given off in the reaction will bubble through the lime water. Sodium carbonate is then added to the flask. A rubber stopper is used to make sure that all of the gas given off goes down the flexible tube to the lime water. Notice that the solution fizzes up, indicating that a gas is given off. Also notice the bubbles of gas bubbling through the lime water in the test tube. The lime water is seen to go cloudy where the gas has bubbled through it. This shows that carbon dioxide was the gas being given off in this reaction. Right, so what you should have said at the end before I showed you the video was that you expected carbon dioxide to be given off and that we would test it using lime water and it would go milky. So let's look at the equation to check. We've got sodium chloride, sodium chloride Na2CO3 plus HCl forms sodium chloride, sorry, sodium carbonate plus HCl forms sodium chloride plus water plus carbon dioxide. So your sodium here, which is your positive, is joining up with the negative chloride ions to form sodium chloride. And then interestingly, because you've got a carbonate and an acid, it always splits up, the rest of it splits up to form water and carbon dioxide. And that's an example of a gas forming reaction. Now let's look at acid-base reactions. Acids and bases, when added together, will always give you a salt and water. So let's look at an example of that. Okay, what I hope you realized by that was that it was actually quite an exothermic reaction. Um, it was quite a fast reaction. And let's look at the equation. We've got sodium hydroxide plus HCl forms sodium chloride and water. In this case, 
the salt here that we're talking about here happens to be sodium chloride which is table salt but this salt here that I'm talking about is not always table salt it is just meaning a, sal a substance which dissolved in water forms an ionic solution right now let's look at this reaction sodium positive joins up with a negative chloride to form sodium chloride and the hydrogen from this molecule joins up with the hydroxyl to form the, form the water. So do you see how beautifully we've had ion exchange reaction here? Now let's look at redox reactions. Redox reactions in basically require the transfer of electrons. So there is a change in the charge of the atom. So let's look at this little reaction here. So magnesium is burning in oxygen. Magnesium as an element has a charge of zero, but when it joins up with oxygen, it suddenly has a charge of two plus. Oxygen as a diatomic molecule has a charge of zero, but suddenly it has a charge of two minus when it is with magnesium oxide. So we can see that magnesium and oxygen have transferred electrons to become magnesium oxide. Right, let's look at another example. So we have our copper, add the nitric acid, That was a pretty cool video. I hope you enjoyed all the facial expressions of the kids behind the experiment and actually looked at the experiment. Okay, so we took copper. Well, he took copper and he added nitric acid. And he ended up with copper nitrate, that horrible gas, that brown gas it was, was this NO2. And you ended up with water. Now, what happened was that the reason he added more water at the end was that he was actually shoving the electron, I mean, the reaction back. And basically, he was, by adding the water, he was, and the water went blue like that to show the free copper ions. Okay, so copper plus your nitric acid, see that the copper takes on the nitrates to form copper nitrates and the hydrogens join up with the free nitrogen, I mean to form water. Okay, so the most important thing is that the copper is actually taken on here, it obviously has a charge of zero and here it has a charge of plus two and it's joined up with the nitrate. Right, so that is a redox reaction. Grade 10s, I hope that you've learned about all the different types of ion exchange reactions. I hope that you've taken them on board. Please go and learn them, understand what each of them is meant, what is meant by each of them. Thank you, have a great day.